so I'm working on a Meteor app uh, and it's part of a PhD that I'm doing at the moment um, and I'm going to explain the story of where it came from and I hope that will make this like slightly abstract thing more concrete. Uh, so I went to a hack day, uh, it's called City Camp and City Camp was all about using data and technology to improve uh, the urban environment. And we were in a big group and everyone was talking about the idea of building a new platform where you could speak to your neighbours and it would be a way that you could like get together and complain to the council about your dustbins and stuff like that. And the guy sitting next to me was a guy called Giles Gibson and he said, well, I run Hernhill Forum. We're already doing that. It works really well. Um, and there's not a technology problem there. The trouble is that the council hate it. They find it really weird to work with and they're terrified of it. Uh, and also, most people don't go on a forum. That's not how they you know, discuss neighbourly things. So they just weren't into that thing. So he said, I wish I could get the data out of my forum and into somewhere more interesting and more accessible for everyone to use it. And so I thought I could do that. And I built a PHP scraper and built this thing that went and uh, crawled through his site and several other forums um, and just did that off my own bat. And then at some point, I uh, saw that the uh, RCA, the Royal College of Art, was um, was offering PhD courses uh, and I applied to go and do that and I said this is my idea it's in the design department they're like yeah okay we're quite into that um, and I make it sound really crisp now it's really vague when I presented it to them and they had no idea probably what I was talking about but um, uh, but they bought into it and so I, that's what I'm doing now um, and so I had kind of quite a bit of time because I'd started this PhD and I was like, what I should do is rebuild all this software I've written in uh, whatever is the newest platform I can see. I'll have to do it in, uh, in Meteor, that's what I'll do. Um, and I also had to kind of firm up the idea a little bit. So I had this kind of uh, way of framing it where I said, okay, this is about uh, civic society and this is about uh, taking the kind of tidal wave of social data, which probably seems like quite old hat to us, but maybe on the scale of like many people engaging it across society is still quite new. And maybe we're really good at using that to do things like make uh, predictions about the stock market or uh, defend reputations of brands, but we're not very good at using that to do socially important things. Maybe there's something socially useful you can do with that. Um, and that boils down to some sort of notion of social capital, so that's what I'm looking at. Um, so social capital, uh, sociologists try to measure this, they'll ask questions like um, how many clubs are you a member of or if you went into a hospital would there be someone to feed your cat? They ask you these networky questions about how, you, how many other people you know. Uh, and so my goal is to take the social data that, that's kind of new and see can you transform it into social capital, can you do some kind of information in, intervention based on that. Um, so that's what this is, um, this is our first iteration of it. Uh, so this is a graph um, drawn from data that came out of a Meteor application uh, and the way it works, it all works with Twitter at the moment because there's no ethical problems with that, which there are with other things. And it takes in tweets um, and it will start off by me picking a Twitter account that I think is at the centre of a community. So I'd very often pick like the local council, something like that. Um, and you can see, so this is working with Hounslow, so London Borough of Hounslow is right in the middle there. Um, and then everyone that interacts with that Twitter account, if they tweet at it, um, I say they're part of the graph. And then I do entity extraction on all the tweets as well. So all of these tweets, uh, we try and find things like, uh, you can see there, Crane Park is not a Twitter account, that's an object. So we can see that is part of the graph. Um, and if you look at this, you can start to see stuff like, I can't remember where he is now, but there's a guy called uh, Isleworth Unofficial Tra Traffic Warden. And he is, uh, he's mental about traffic offences around Hounslow and he will go around and just tweet about anyone who he thinks has uh, sort of violated his own particular code of the way you should park your car. Um, and you also start to see other sort of, oh, there he is, and he's part of a network that's uh, Hounslow Highways and London Borough of Hounslow and this other guy, Ponyboy1234, who's really also passionate about parking. Um, so that was the first iteration of this thing and it was kind of um, a bit clunky and then Richard got involved and started helping me out um, building a slightly uh, better version of this thing. Um, and so I was going to talk a little bit about our actual development journey and how, how that's worked. So when, uh, when I started doing this thing I was just using uh, straight out Meteor deployment uh, to try and capture this graph data. and. I read blog posts and they said, well, you know, you kind of, maybe you can use Mongo to record graph data. Maybe that does work. Maybe that's going to be okay. Uh, so I thought, well, I won't try and use a graph database. That's, you know, too much. And then me and Richard had a look at it and we thought maybe it is too much. 
but the lesson that I think that we've learned is you can't. It's just not going to happen. If you've got what is intrinsically graph data and you want to make graph queries of it, um, it's just not going to work in Mongo. So obviously, what you can't do is have two tables of uh, edges and nodes, which you might want to do, because then you're going to have to do loads of joins across this thing, which is really expensive. So then you think, OK, and I did build this. Uh, I took all the edges and I put them against the node. So each node has a list against it. So then what starts to happen is each node is going to have a document with an edge list in it. And that edge list might have 2,000 entries. And that makes it really, really slow. It makes Mongo horribly slow. Um, and so it seems like you do really have to work with Neo4j, uh, which is, as far as I know, the only kind of like really happening um, graph database. And I think we found that relatively easy process. Like it, it wasn't um, straightforward necessarily, but I thought it would be a full-blown nightmare, but it wasn't. So that was our, our lesson from that. And uh, so I was just going to show a quick uh, heat map. So this is looking at Brixton. So I might end up working with, um, with Lambeth Council. Uh, and that's just um, automatically detecting where tweets are about. So we also look for street names and stuff like that so that we can start to map where people are talking about. Uh, so that's my prototyping experience with Meteor.